Tom here from Lawrence Systems and PFSense 2301 was released on February 15th of 2023. Today is February 17th of 2023 and I've updated some of our office systems and our lab systems and some other systems to test because we start rolling this out to customers pretty much immediately once we realize whether or not there's any issues. And so far I haven't found any issues that I would say would stop me from going forward. That being said, that's a few things that are very nuanced I want to talk about here to make sure you have a good upgrade experience. That first thing and the first step, and there's a whole video on it linked down below, is use the boot environments. Boot environments will greatly help you recover if something goes wrong or if you don't follow a step properly or the download breaks or something goes wrong with your whole update process. I didn't have too many problems, but I was also testing and following some pretty good practices here to avoid many of those problems. Now, they have a whole guide on how to do the upgrade. I recommend you follow it, but if you want to know if Tom followed it exactly, the answer is no. Uh, kind of out of laziness, but I'll tell you what I did do. I go ahead and reboot the firewall before I start the upgrade process. This helps eliminate any potential issues of maybe you have a drive that's ready to fail, but you wouldn't know until you reboot it. But if you then add on top of that, you load an update, and that's the first time you rebooted it in nine months, well, that may be a problem uh, where you didn't know there was going to be a problem. So as long as the firewall boots up fine before you start the upgrade, you're good. That at least eliminates that as a factor. Next, I have that snapshot I create with a fully work conversion. Then I go ahead and remove a few packages. Now, the packages are supposed to pretty much all be removed when you do these major upgrades to avoid the issue. Sometimes it works. Sometimes there's some hang up on there. It's really not a big deal to remove packages because the default install option on packages is to remember the settings. So if you remove a package and then reinstall that package, all the configuration for that package for something like Sericata should come in there. Now, when I say I didn't follow the instructions completely, I just chose to remove a few packages that I thought might cause problems because I had problems when I was playing with the release candidate with these packages, not following through when I did the in-place upgrade. So I did remove Sericata, PF Blocker, NTOP PNG, and Zabbix. Those are the only ones I chose to remove. And then I created one more snapshot after I moved them because just in case I had to remove one more and the upgrade went bad, uh, but the upgrade went fine once I removed those packages on each system that I had tested. One thing I kind of note is I wish, and maybe the developers will get around to this, there was a remove all packages button. That would be really handier if I could checkbox remove them because the only reason I didn't remove all of them because I didn't want to tediously go through and do each one through the web UI. So I think there's a way you can do it from the command line, but I do follow the web UI when I'm share the same experience as most users will have using it. And hey, that'd be cool if there's a checkbox. Once the upgrade was done, then I went ahead and added those packages back in, made sure everything worked, rebooted the firewall one more time after the packages just to make sure there was no errors when it restarted. And now everything works. Now, we're going to get into what my environment looks like, but let's first jump over to what's new in PFSense 2301. And we'll just cover the highlights and I'll leave, of course, links to all the details, but we'll also then jump to the what doesn't work and a couple known bugs as of today that have been reported. Uh, but the good news is there's workarounds for these bugs. And hey, all that's linked down below. Now, the first big major change, and this is where there's just a lot of reworking under the hood here, is the move to PHP 8.1 and FreeBSD main. This means FreeBSD is going to be at 14 as the underlying OS, and PHP 8.1 is supported all the way to 2024, with the older PFSense running the seven versions that are, well, end of life being sunset. Added support for ChaCha -Cha Poly 1305 encryption. They did this with IPsec and with the OpenVPN DCO. Data channel offload is awesome. It is a substantial gain in speed for OpenVPN. And uh, that's a really nice thing because OpenVPN, because it attaches to things like LDAP or Radius and other methods of authentication, maybe where you tie this into a business with Active Directory, which is something we do, um, you're going to see OpenVPN for years to come. And actually, this kind of breathes a lot of new life into it in terms of performance. And I think this is a great feature that they've added in here. Next. Resolving previous issues at Unbound. There's a whole write-up down below where Christian McDonald was able to finally reproduce kind of an elusive bug that caused some problems in Unbound, and that's all been reworked, so that does not occur again for those of you that were having the Unbound crash. Continuing to improve Captive Portal, which many people know I'm not the biggest Captive Portal fan because of the support problems it creates. I will note that this does not improve your 
experience that you'll have if you put Captain Portal on a Wi-Fi network with a lot of general public users on there, especially if they have phones, you'll run into weird issues with Captain Portal. Unrelated to PFSense, just because some phones don't process Captain Portal very well. Um, that's still my opinion on it, but hey, there's improvements on the way Captive Portal works, and maybe I'll do an updated video on it since their PFSense 23 is here, and you know, it's worth talking about. Updating a PF Blocker NG package to match the PF Blocker development version. They're the same now. So you want to load PF Blocker NG. You don't need to load development version that was ahead of the other one. So this is the version you load right now here. Um, maybe I'll do an updated video because there's been some changes in PF Blocker, but for the most part, it looks enough the same that my previous videos will get you through setting it up if you're uncertain. Now I want to touch on a topic that's been, well, a bit controversial to some people, but I think this is a good thing. They've moved to the new version of FreeBSD 14. Some may go, well, FreeBSD 14 isn't completely released, is it? And you would be correct, but the people at NetGate are code contributors upstream. FreeBSD 14 is due out later this year as a whole operating system, but this is PFSense built as an appliance by the team at NetGate. I feel they're competent enough to build this in a stable manner with the latest version of BSD as a base. This being an appliance means not everything is in there and the package repos it's pulling from are the ones provided by PFSense. So their customization of it kind of alleviates to me any worry that they're using a more new version than what would be considered current stable. This also gives them access to the most up-to-date drivers for a variety of hardware. This is something people have asked for and they're delivering on. Closer alignment to the develop cycle of FreeBSD, so we're developing future versions against similar branches, avoidance of more complex and larger volumes of work, anytime PFSense software should change to a newer FreeBSD base, ability to upstream our own changes and development to FreeBSD without a subsequent merge to older base, lowering our technical debt. This is actually something that really needs to be considered if you're contributing the latest updates and the latest changes, you then not only get them in FreeBSD 14, then you have to, if you were on a previous version, bring those down and backport them in. Now they don't need to do that and do the merge into the old base. They can now just have the new base. So I think this is going forward going to save them a lot of time. And it's also why it's taken so long undoubtedly to get to these newer releases, because this is a lot of code reworking under the hood. Even though it doesn't give you visually a major change in PFSense, it gives you a base change that's pretty substantial. And once again, this is for both CE and the PFSense Plus versions here that this is being done for. Now let's talk about some of the environments I'm testing in. This one is my studio firewall which is not too complicated, but it has a few things set up here. We have uh, just a single interface, but we do have a privacy VPN. So that's working perfectly fine, connected to uh, PIA. I have my WireGuard VPN connected to my office. Well, other office, I should say. So that's working fine. So we have the client instance here, no issues uh, with any of those settings. Then we have down here, um, the handful of different networks and VLANs and no issues with any of that. And I'm running on this one specifically, Snort, because I wanted to try Snort because a lot of people asked, does Snort work? Well, I use Snort at home and we use Sericata at the office. But all these packages loaded perfectly fine, didn't run into any issues. And I have NG on this one. Moving over to our office system. The office system has dual WAN, so we got some load balancing going on. We have HA proxy, we've got Darkstat, we got ARPWatch running. We also have NTOP PNG, OpenVPN, Free Radius, Sericata that we're running, and Sericata is working fine here. There, there's something I'll get to about Sericata in a moment. Uh, WireGuard and Zavix. So all of these things running at the office here and no issues. Matter of fact, uh, I collapsed it so you don't see all their IP addresses, but all the employees that remote in have been remoting in perfectly fine. So this is a little bit more complicated setup using because we use the free radius to authenticate all the users, but none of this seems to have any trouble. Uh, we haven't had any usage issues in terms of uh, the CPU usage being higher, the memory being high. Uh, that, I seen that question come up a little bit, but I didn't see any change from before or after we loaded to say there's a substantial change in memory usage on there. One of the things I will note, this is our NetGate 8200, and I've been waiting for the 2301 to come out to do the review. So this will be a long-term review. We've actually been using this for a few months now, and I'm really happy with the 8200. So the video will be out soon, but I, I'm running a full production load on it for a few months. So my thoughts on it are based on that. All right, now let's go to one more environment. 
And this is virtualized inside of Zen. Once again, didn't have any problems with it. We just have Sericata running on it. I just loaded it this morning to make sure it worked. But all this was working, didn't have a problem at all uh, doing it in a Zen environment. Now, we, the ones we've tested in terms of devices in the office were some custom hardware setups just that we had laying around. And then we loaded up a 3100, which we've been getting prepped and that'll go out to some clients. Uh, some of the clients that are close will probably just swap the 3100 and swap it out. So there's a minimum amount of downtime and not having to remote in because the clients are close. But whenever we can, obviously we prefer to log in and do these remotely. So the 3100 didn't seem to have a problem, but let's get into doesn't have a problem except this one thing if you run into it and didn't do a fresh load. Because we had a lab set up, we didn't encounter the error because we fresh loaded it because we can. We'll just grab a new image and load it fresh. But let's talk about what's not working. Now, this particular problem was brought to my attention on our live stream, but of course, I looked through the forums and was reading through it this morning to see all the latest information. And it looks like this was updated four minutes ago. And there's basically some fixes for this. What you're running into is certain scenarios, such as if you didn't just fresh load like we did ours at our office, you could run into a problem where it will not create the proper tunnel when you're setting up OpenVPN. Don't worry, there's a fix. You don't have to roll back. Uh, updating it manually allows the starts allows the tunnels to start. So pretty simple fix in here. The notes in the forum post and the bigger discussion is linked right inside of his. And I've got this link down below. System states graph no longer working. Now it still monitors other things such as the ping times and everything else. I've done a video on using the system monitor to monitor your gateway ping times, but it's not monitoring the states. And you can see this person when they did the upgrade and I noticed this issue as well. Good news is there's a fix, there's a ticket and there's a patch. This is actually a really cool feature you may not know about in PFSense. You can actually install a tool called system patches and then you can apply a patch number. And this is a way for PFSense without you even reloading the system or reverting back to the old version, you can apply a specific patch and it pulls that patch and inserts it into your PFSense. So this is actually pretty cool that there's a fix for it. So if you care about the states and you don't wanna wait till this gets fixed in a future version, you can apply the fix today. This was posted about uh, 21 hours ago, it looks like, and there's still some discussion on it. But nonetheless, there's a fix for this if you care about the system states. Now I've covered what I found in the forums as of today, recording this video, but in terms of new features and changes and more detailed release notes, there are a couple things they do note in here. One of them is on using ZFS, the first boot post upgrade will appear to have a higher normal memory usage due to large volume of file activity that takes place during the upgrade process. This is harmless and due to ZFS arc memory usage. I've done a whole video on ZFS arc regarding TrueNAS. It applies the same because this is also uh, BSD based. So the using ZFS BSD, you're going to get the same arc usage, which is a good thing, but it will show you using that extra memory for that reason. One of the things that's kind of noteworthy in here though, um, the NetGate 1000 does not support FreeBSD 14. So that one's out and not eligible for upgrade. The PCI bus for the NetGate 1100 and 2100 model does not currently function 2301. This means if you're trying to use those uh, and using such as a wireless card in them, you're going to have a problem. Now I'm going to skip further down the list because, well, there's a lot of things to cover in here and I need to keep the video somewhat brief here, but there's plenty of things you should read through. One though that hit me was this right here. Sericata has an issue processing past list entries containing a slash 31 subnets. Developers have a fix prepared for testing, which will be added to the package shortly after 2301 release. See 13920 for details, so you can check the status of this. This update will solve this problem if you have a pass list that has a slash 31. I think this actually came up where I was confused when it seemed like Sericata and WireGuard weren't playing nice together, but it's actually more specific than that. It's when you have a pass list and you've set probably a peer to a slash 31 and added it to the pass list. But this is something that is actively known and there's a fix that will, well, maybe by the time you're watching this is already available and it may not even affect you at all, but just something I should note if you're doing one of these upgrades. And that's all I have with the PFSense Plus 2301 release. And of course I have to address the elephant in the room is what about PFSense CE? Is it dead? Were those commenters right when they told us 2.6 would be the last release? But they're also the same people I think they told me 2.5 was their last release or something like that. 
but I have played with and tested the 2.7. We have a couple of them running at the office because I like to test the CE. A lot of people are still interested in that. Progress has been made. It's running FreeBSD 14. It's based on PHP 8.1. Sound familiar? Yes, they do develop these in parity with each other, the PFSense Plus and the PFSense CE. PFSense Plus has a few extra things. I think PFSense Plus is great if you want to use it, but if you are a diehard who only wants to use a CE version, that's fine too. There's a few differences. I've got a video where I cover the differences on there. Of note, you don't get the boot environments with your PFSense CE version, but nonetheless, 2.7 is available. The images are there. You can download them. You can test them. You can see how the progress has come on that. The development team is working diligently to solve any problems with that particular version. So I expect it to be released maybe soon, but I don't have a crystal ball and her answer is a good one. They don't release it until they feel it's stable. So now that this is released and they're quashing some bugs, I feel they'll get that release pushed out here relatively soon. Nonetheless, leave your thoughts and comments down below. If you have a bug to report, head over to the NetGate forums, and that's a great place to engage the developers to get those problems solved because complaining about them on Twitter and tagging Tom, complaining about them on YouTube is the worst way to get them solved. I just kind of shrug my shoulders and go, wow, you have a bug. Is there a bug report? Um, and then someone usually tries to post the link and YouTube comments eats the link. So engage with the development team. The forums are free. Join them. My forums are free if you want to engage with me. The NetGate forums are a great place to do some reading and engage with the developers over there. And if you have a nice write-up, that's how we get bugs solved as we work our way through them. We make them reproducible. We provide the evidence to the teams there and then they solve them. So go ahead and get... Updating. All right, and thanks.